Hi everyone, welcome to this session. So today we will be solving this uh, interesting interview question. Okay. So basically we have three mock set M1, M2 and M3 and, and we have to find what is the looking in impedance from this node that is RE. Okay. So to find the impedance at any node with respect to ground, what do we do? We apply a test voltage there, small signal voltage. V, let's say VT, V test and find what is the current coming out of this node, small signal current, okay. And then we take the ratio VT over IT to get the impedance at that node, let's say RT, okay. So this is how we calculate the in, like impedance at any node, okay. Like incremental impedance, right. Incremental impedance, okay. Right. And how do we do? We do if they are present a uh, like uh, like uh, constant or uh, independent voltage source. We have to deactivate all, all all of those, right? We have to deactivate all the independent independent sources, right? So if they are present a voltage source, so then it becomes short circuited. And if they are present a current source, then it becomes open circuit, right? We all know that, right? And we have to do the all the small signal calculations of MOSFET, right? So if you do that, you will you will get uh, you will get okay one minute. So so you will get this type of structure. Okay. Now you have to finally calculate. So we have applied a V test over here, and we have to find the I X, right? Then you have to take the V X over I X ratio then we have to find this r in right but we are not going to do that we are going to do with intuitive analysis okay like we are not going to write any kcl and kbls and uh, we no need to draw this type of small signal model okay so we can see that in this figure so we can see that this node is nothing but this node as well right so we have to find the equivalent impedance from this node okay so here we can see that there is two paths, uh, one is upper path and one is uh, like downward path, right? So we have to find the impedance from upward and, and the impedance from uh, downward from this node and then we have to do it like and, and these two impedance comes in parallel, right? So if I redraw the circuit again, so it will be looking like this, right? So let's say, so this is our M1 and this is diode connected. And we can make this as a equivalent impedance of Rx, right? So this is our M, uh, M3, right? So we can see that there is two paths. One path is Rx only and another path is nothing but this path, right? So if we consider the challenge length modulation, let's say that RDS of M3 is present, right? So we know that the downward impedance of a diode connected device is nothing but 1 over Gm right so it will be 1 over gm3 parallel rts of 3 right this is the downward impedance and here from upward the impedance is nothing but rx right rx and these two comes in parallel so our r in is nothing but rx parallel this quantity let, let's say this is ry okay so this is ry so rx parallel ry okay so this is our equivalent r in okay now we have to find the rx so we can see that from like this configuration is nothing but a cascode configuration, right? And we know that the cascode configuration has a impedance of, like for this case, the impedance will be nothing but, and this is called the cascode device, and this is called the degenerating device, right? As we are looking from there, right? So we know that from this node, the this equivalent impedance becomes Rx, Rx becomes, so this will be nothing but 1 plus Gm2, RO2 like RDS2 here right into RDS of 1 plus RDS of 2 right so this is the equivalent impedance of a cascode right like uh, like present in this manner okay and these two are like bias quantities so this will be AC small signal ground while we finding this impedances right so now finally we have this RX is nothing but 1 plus GM2 RDS2 into RDS1 plus RDS2. Okay, so this is our equivalent impedance. So if we if I write the final expression, so R in will be nothing but so these two 
will be R X parallel R Y. So this will be nothing but R X is nothing but one plus G M two R T S two into R T S one plus R T S two. And this comes in parallel with uh, one over G M three parallel R T S three, right? So now equivalently, equivalently, this impedance is the lowest impedance. Okay. This this is a high impedance and this is also a high impedance. So equivalently, the like the R in will be nothing but approximately equal to one over G M three. Okay. So now basically, so we can find that this is a very low impedance, right? So you will find you will find this type of structure in a LDO, like different types of LDO. Okay. So basically, this this node becomes a low impedance path. Okay. Low impedance. So this node becomes a non-dominant point. Okay. This node becomes non-dominant. Okay. Non-dominant. Non-dominant pole. Okay. Because there is always a capacitor present called CGG. Okay. In real circuit. Okay. So this becomes a non-dominant, non-dominant node. Okay, with respect to frequency response. So this is a very good circuit. Actually, this uh, configuration I get while doing a LDO. So I thought I should discuss it, discuss with you. Okay. So this is a very good question. And uh, okay, and the, so so you can find that so the configuration might be look might be looking like this. Okay. So this configuration might be looking like this, right? This will be okay. So this will be okay. So this will be looking like this. So normally we while we are like initial stage of our designs, we can use as a constant current source of this cascode structure. Okay, and then we have to see what is the impedance from here from there. So this will be nothing but one over GM. Okay, GM. Let's say GM three. Okay. So thank you everyone. You can. Uh, your valuable feedbacks okay